Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. So today we're going to be doing the next part of our detailed walkthrough Dark Souls 3. So we are where we left it off and that is at the uh, Dragon Slayer armor boss. So we just defeated him and next up is the Grand Archives. So I really want to point this out and I'll point it out a few times. I'm using a different character because I recorded this with the character we was doing the detailed walkthrough with. The capture card decided to corrupt the file and I lost everything. So we're going to be doing it again with this character which luckily was just about to get here. I need to say that there's one difference and that difference is that I've not been doing Grey Rat's quest. So I won't see Grey Rat's ashes. But uh, I will I'll make sure I point out perfectly where the ashes are. Uh, because all we've got left to do with Grey Rat is literally just pick his ashes up. That's it because... Uh, Last episode we sent him out at a tour. Uh, we sent him out the third time, which is uh, to Lothric Castle, and like I said, you cannot make him live. He will die, no matter what you do, and we will find his ashes on his body, and that's what we're going to be doing this episode. But um, this character was not doing Grey Rat's quest, so we won't see him. But I will make sure. I will uh, point out where they are because you guys will see them just like I did on my original character. Anyway, we just picked up the Grand Archives keys and a sword. Though some people um, have been saying a lot, though the, the key isn't there for me, the weapon isn't there for me, and why is that? And it's just, the only reason is because you haven't done all three of the Lords of Cinder. Just make sure you kill three Lords of Cinder and do not do the Dancer boss early. If not, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get to this point and you're not going to be able to advance anyway. So, yeah, just just kill three Lords of Cinder just like we have done. Anyway, uh, in this room, there's an item over here to the right. Uh, we just scared off a Crystal Sage. Uh, that Crystal Sage is going to be a bit further up and it's going to be pretty important because he is going to give us the last scroll we need to complete um, Orbex quests, which we are going to be doing this episode. Uh, also, we're going to be doing Sirius's and finishing Sirius's uh, quest this episode. And technically, we could finish um, Leonhard's too, but I'm not sure. Maybe we'll, I think we'll probably do that next video just to make not th not make this one that long. Um, what else do I have to say? So this character, though, we're not using the exact same character. The character's pretty much got exactly the same stats. Like, identical. Same weapon. Plus 10. Uh, refined. Uh, I store a greatsword. Uh, pretty much the exact same stats. So, you know, don't worry about the character. You're going to be doing... Or we, I don't know. Maybe, obviously, you're not going to be doing the same character as I have. But maybe some people have. So yeah, so we're going to have the same amount of strength and all that. Um, stuff I should mention. I don't know really. Um, the only NPC quest technically we couldn't complete yet after this episode, or in this episode, is uh, Hawkwoods, which we'll be doing on the final episode. Uh, obviously after this video, the final episode will be back with the original character. Because I need to record that and... It shouldn't get corrupted, hopefully. Hopefully this video won't get corrupted, because holy shit, I'm going to be depressed as fuck. Uh. Uh, anyway, coming around here, I'm not really talking about uh, I'm not really talking about what we're doing much. Anyway, around there, uh, we're going to pick up the crystal chime, which is a chime that we can actually uh, use spells with, too. Uh, so, where this Titanite chunk is, there's technically the only way back to the original room from this part. We will have another path back. A bit later on. Uh, okay, so at this wax pool, uh, you want to go ahead and uh, dip your head in. Because uh, what this is going to do is prevent these arms and hands that come out of the wall and floor. It's going to prevent them from doing anything to you. Uh, so there's a crystal list up here. And there's actually a crystal list down here too. But it's, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think it's possible to get both of them the same go. Alright, up against this wall there's going to be a soul, and to the right of that soul there's going to be a lever just here. So make sure you go ahead and press that. That's actually going to open uh, this bookshelf over here to our left. And in here we are going to get power within. And a whip. I'm not sure, I believe this whip scales with magic or intelligence, I think. I could be wrong. Right, so nothing left down here, and let's continue. 
You may be able to tell that my voice is slightly off too, or I'm actually getting another cold. Great. Summer in Spain, they say. Don't get me wrong, it is bloody hot, but I'm not sure why I'm getting the cold. Okay. So, uh, over here, there's going to be a hand ladder that we can knock down. This will be our second option to get back to the original room. Or get back up here if we die. Because there's not... Uh, there's no part of going back down at the moment. Pick up another Titanite chunk. Let's get rid of this crystal lizard. Probably just some Titanite chunk. No, oh, I'm sorry. Twinkling Titanite. Right, so in this area where the balcony is, uh, the Crystal Sage will actually start harassing us a bit. Let's go out on this balcony to get these homeward bones. There's a hand ladder here, but uh, it will just take us to a higher balcony that we're going to be getting to anyway. So this lever just here is going to open another bookshelf over there, directly in front of us where the wax pool was. So we'll be going to over there in a second anyway. Uh, over where this other wax pool is, there's going to be a few enemies. And uh, this tight night chunk. I'm trying to not, like, I'm trying to move as fast as I can just so the uh, crystal sage don't, don't screw me over too much. Right, so let's continue. Let's go f up these stairs just here. Uh, instead of heading right, let's head left first. Where this uh, candle mage is. And what we're going to do, and let's get rid of these guys. That damage though, holy shit. Right, where the crystal mage? Oh, just just leave me alone. I'm trying to explain where we got to go. Oh, that hit me anyway. Fuck you. Right, we're going to jump off anyway. I don't. Just hopefully this guy won't knock us off. So where this Titanite skill was, let's just roll off again onto these little roofs or whatever the fuck you want to call them. Uh, this is where we're going to find the Avalyn, and really all we can do now is just, uh, hop back down to the original bottom floor. Right, so go ahead and rest at the bottom floor if you want to get your Estus back and all that. Uh, obviously if you do do that though, the, uh, Crystal Sage will spawn back down here. So, just make sure you get rid of him to, to get him to teleport up to the top. Uh, now we are down here, we are actually not going to take the hand ladder we just activated because we are actually going to get the item that was, uh, that, that's behind the sh bookshelf that we opened with the elevator that was up there. Just watch out for the crystal sage here. And that is going to be just here. And this is going to contain a titanite slab. So that's going to be our second titanite slab. The first one we got off of our Sig Ward when we rescued him in the dungeons. So technically we could already have... Two weapons at plus ten. Well, I think so anyway. Maybe not. Maybe because there's chunks. I'm not sure. Right, let's let's get rid of this uh, crystal lizard, which is the one I mentioned that you probably sh probably won't be able to kill both of them the same attempt. So we're just gonna do that now and head back up to the path we was taken. So right, I'm just gonna ignore these guys. So this time uh, we're gonna head up the stairs and instead of taking a left, we're actually gonna take a right. And this is where we're going to encounter the uh, Crystal Sage a uh, second time. Just watch out for the mages that are around him because they're quite spammy. Yeah, just hit him a few times and he'll disappear. Uh, so this is the balcony that is right above the bottom balcony with the hand ladder. So you could, take, you could have technically just came straight up here. Um, right, let's continue. Watch out for these guys. Pieces of shit. This piece of shit. And yeah, we, we're about to get to we're about to get to the Crystal Sage again. But first, pick up this Titanite scale, and in this going to be a, this going to be a hidden wall just here, or a fake wall, sorry. And in here, there's going to be an Irithyll beast. I don't really like using these uh, long or the great swords against these guys, but still, at least it knocks him back a fair bit. Pretty much staggers him all the time, which is good. One more. No! I'm dead. <gasps> so lucky there. Whew! Anyway, this guy will give us the Outrider set, which is pretty cool. And over here, we're going to find the spell Soul Stream that uh, if, if anybody's fought the final boss, uh, they should know what one it is. You need a lot of intelligence to use it, I believe, though. Right, anyway, let's head out of the fake wall again. Uh, so we could drop down here directly to get to the Crystal Sage. 
and taking these hand ladders, the exact same uh, result. But we're going to pick up this Titanite scale to the left before dropping down. And we're going to pick up this Shivering Stone. Right, so let's go ahead and kill this motherfucker. To the right, there's going to be a passageway with a knight at the end, but it's literally a dead end. The only use that our uh, passageway's got is a bit later on. You can jump down from, from a bit later on. Right, let's finally finish off with this guy. So this guy will give us the final scroll that we can give into Orbeck to complete his quest and buy all the uh, all the spells, which is the crystal scroll. We'll be given that. We'll be completing his quest at the end of the episode anyway. All right, so before heading across the bridge, to the right of the bridge, or the stair bridge, or whatever you want to call it, it's going to be a lever, and this is going to open this little passageway with the scholar ring in it, and this is going to take us back to where the second wax pool was. We're actually going to dip our head in that. Oh, God. forgot about you guys. So we're actually going to go ahead and dip our head in that. Because uh, there's going to be plenty more of those hand guys, so... Yep. Right. So let's continue through the level. Let's go head across the bridge where the uh, crystal sage was. So to the left here, there's a little drop we can drop off, but literally only going to take us that crystal lizard. Thank you very much. And I don't want to do that because it's a waste of time. So really, you just drop off, kill the crystal lizard, and you will be back at uh, the first wax pool. You can do it. Go ahead, but you just have to. You're just going to have to walk all the way back around. It's up to you, really. Alright, so this elevator is going to take us back down to the first room also. Go ahead and open it from this side with this lever. As you can see, we are back in the first room. So, yeah, you could technically go back to the shrine if you want with all the souls you've been collected. Which you probably got quite a lot. But I'm not going to do it for the sake of the walkthrough. For the sake of me not editing. And for the sake that hopefully we don't die. But anyway, in this next room, uh, it's going to be a bit empty. It's going to be a load of these uh, wax mages, a few of these hands. But if we've got wax, it doesn't really matter. Over here at the far end of the right, it's going to have a large soul. And uh, in this chest just here, there's going to be some scales or something. Tyrant scale. We'll be coming back to this room a bit later on. Something to do with Orbex quest. But we're going to be doing that at the end of the episode. Right, so continuing up these stairs to the right, there's going to be a crystal lizard. And at the end, there's going to be the flesh bite ring. Uh, also, uh, in case you guys didn't notice, that crystal lizard actually gave us a refined gem, so we can have another refined weapon, which is pretty good. Right, so on the rooftops, uh, instead of heading forwards, we're actually going to come over here to the right where this item is, and we're going to be ambushed by a gargoyle. Be careful of him. Try to finish him off as fast as we can. Right, uh, pick this up, tight like chunk. And uh, before continuing, we're actually going to stick to our left on the way back and drop off to this rooftop just here. Okay, so where this item is, where this tight light chunk is, we're going to see the same knight as we've seen just before killing the crystal sage. And if we drop off here, we'll be, we're going to be back in that passageway. So that's the whole point of that. Still kind of pointless, but it's, I guess it's just if you want to go back or whatever. But anyway, it's a hollow gem here. Uh, there's going to be a rooftop over here to the right, but it's pointless, so don't go out there. Uh, on this one, there's going to be these enemies, and just going to ignore them because no point of killing them. They're just annoying as hell. Okay, so on this rooftop, we're actually going to jump to the right of this column. Okay, so here, where my character is, there's going to be Grey Rat's Ashes. You are going to be finding Grey Rat's ashes, ash, ashes if you've followed the walkthrough to this point. Just like I found him on my original character, but the data got corrupted, the video got corrupted. And I'm doing it on a different character, and like I said at the start, the only difference is that this character has not been doing Grey Rat's quest, so I'm not going to find his ashes. You will find this ashes just here where my character's standing. I just want to make sure you guys know that. Uh, all you can do is go ahead and give those ashes into the merchant and Firelink, and he will, she will sell you everything that Grey Rat had available, plus some new stuff. So make sure you go and do that. Okay, anyway, we're picking up this Titanite scale. These, this is the item that you would actually be able to see from the elevators, from the um, balcony here, where the hand ladder was. So I'm just going to 
just going to continue up and get back to uh, the rooftops. Okay, so yeah, I just want to make sure that you guys know that we have now finally completed Great Rat's quest line, and that is over. As soon as you give those ashes into the merchant at Firelink, Grey, Grey Rat's quest line will be completed. Um, I have done it on the original character, like I said, the one got corrupted, and you will see it next episode because I'm going to be going back to that character, obviously. And you'll see that everything's been done. And you guys should have it done anyway if you've been following the detailed walkthrough. Are you going to fall off or are you just going to be a piece of shit? Okay, I see what you went for there. Oh, come on, man. That's so annoying. Sorry if I, fight, if I sound a bit stressed or impatient, but... Literally recorded all this. Sat there for five hours trying to get the video back. But no, it wasn't going to happen, so... And then I had to kind of get this character slightly slightly ready for this episode, so yeah. Oh, hello there. Okay, let's just continue. Let's just keep going. There's nothing to find around here. There's no secrets around here. So just can keep going through the rooftops or over the rooftops. Pick this Titanite chunk up. I'm going to ignore this guy. So on this rooftop, this final rooftop, there's not going to be anything. So don't bother looking around. Just jump down into this round balcony. And there's also not going to be anything out there. So let's head into the inside. And we're going to be above the, the room we were previously in. With all the bookshelves and I believe a chest with Titanite scales. And just there, the undead bone shard we just picked up is the final undead bone shard of the game. You should end. You should now, once you give that one in, you should have Estus at uh, 14 with plus 10, which is the limit. As you see, I've got it plus 8, but I have got two undead bone shards. So yeah, you can kick this hand ladder down to get back down there quickly if you want. And yeah, we're just gonna continue round. Uh, don't think there's much point of doing this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. Right, so uh, we're not going to head out to the left quite yet. We're going to go round to a balcony. Well done. Anyway, chat for this red eyed knight. I shouldn't even bother us, really. Alright, two tight knight chunks, and let's get back in. So yeah, we have done everything possible so far, so now we're going to head out here to this area. We don't have any Estus left, so this could be pretty dangerous. There's going to be three NPCs here. Each one with a unique weapon that they drop. Once we kill them. Alright, let's see if we can lure this guy out a bit. Uh -oh. Okay, this guy will drop is the Ubidachi and uh, Ubi, uh, la, Onikiri and Ubidachi. The guy we already killed will drop is a shield, I believe, and the mage will drop us her staff. There we go, Onikiri and Ubidachi. Let's hope we can kill this bitch without much trouble. Ah, oh, okay. Sage of Crystal Staff, Onikiri Ubidachi, and a shield, which is the Golden Wing Crest shield. Okay, uh, we are nearly there, guys. Um, in this room, there's going to be an elevator. There's going to be the biggest shortcut of the level, so we're going to go ahead and take that and head back to the bonfire to to get our resters back. Because we have some pretty tough battles coming up in a second. Let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, we came out right next to the bonfire, which is really nice. 
there's the uh, shortcut I use to get back to the boss fight if we die. And uh, let's head back up. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, before going across the bridge, we're actually going to come up here to the left. It's a bit of a hard to see staircase. Uh, on this first dome, we're going to go around the side because there's going to be an item on this balcony. Which is a soul. And we're just going to continue the only path we can really continue or take, which is on these rooftops. Right, so once we get to this big dome, uh, we're going to go up one set of stairs and then we're going to go to the right and we're going to find another set of stairs. And uh, this is going to take us to a hand ladder. We're going to climb that hand ladder. And pick up the hunter's ring, which is the ring that boosts our dexterity, which is pretty good. Right, I'm going to go back down. Technically, you could just jump off right in front of you and it'll take you back down in two. But uh, I want to go back down these stairs until we're on the big dome. And we're going to continue round to the right until we find this little archway. And at the end of this roof, we will have our final Esther Shard. So that is it. That is that is the last one. So with that, we will have 15 Esters at plus 10, which is the limit. So though we have an episode left, which is an optional area, uh, we don't get no Undead Bone Shards and we get no Esther Shards from that area. So before dropping down that hole we're actually going to come back out because these motherfuckers will be here. There's going to be three of these golden guys. Not pleasant. But we want to kill three of them because if we kill three of them we will get another Titanite Slab. And that will be our third one and second one in this episode. And we're not actually over yet because we're actually going to get a third one in this episode. The fourth one sorry. No third one in this episode. Fourth one in total. But we're going to be doing that afterwards a bit later on. Right, large Titanite Shard. Right, uh, the other two are normally together. Which is not a good thing. Ooh, that damage, man. Holy shit, this sword at plus 10 refined is nice. Don't do that shit, dude. Thank you. And, okay, I got his weapon. And there should be one more somewhere around here. Normally there's two of them together, but it looks like there's not this time for some reason. Oh, there you are. I don't think so. Oh, we'll be getting that miracle in a second, guys. Just in case you're wondering if we get that miracle or not in the game. We will. Very soon, actually. I think it's the next item we get. Right, kill these guys, get the Titanite Slab, and continue uh, down this hole. Try and land on this beam. There's not going to be any item on the beam, so just uh, drop down to the cage and head into the cage. And yes, like I just said, we're going to get Divine Pillars of Light, which is the miracle that those winged knights use. So yeah, so just hop out onto this beam, and there's going to be a Shivering Stone, I believe, at the end. No, blessed gem, okay. Right, so the only way we can go is dropping onto this beam just here with this motherfucker, which is going to try and knock us off. Get rid of him and take the hand ladder that is right beside him. All the way down to the bottom, there's going to be two chests here. One's got a divine blessing, I believe the other one's got scales or twinkling titanite in it. Let's see, twinkling titanite, okay. And yeah, um, if we continue the way, the only way we can, we're going to end up uh, dropping down to an earlier area, which is where we first go out to the rooftop. So we're just going to go ahead and go back to the last bonfire rest at to take the shortcut back up to the beat, the, the bridge, <laughs> the beach, the beach, sure, the beach. I wish I was on the fucking beach right now. Okay, so this time we are going to take the, the big bridge and... Though it seems strange, there's actually not going to be any items on it. So you don't have to really worry about any of the enemies. You can just literally run all the way through without worrying about enemies or items. There is going to be a one more pretty good item before the boss though. And uh, like I said before, it's going to be our fourth uh, Titanite Slab. Third one this episode. So to get that before heading in this uh, door, the boss door. Uh, we're going to head to the right and there's going to be another shortcut elevator. 
Though we're not really going to be using this one to get to the boss because it's actually a bit longer in my opinion. I think it's a bit longer anyway. Uh, this is going to take us to uh, Lothric Castle where we was last episode and this is going to actually take us to <clears throat> to just here I think you know you guys know exactly where I am it's before the boss battle in Lothric Castle so yeah it's gonna be an elevator here so what we're actually gonna do is um, get that lift to go back up because there's gonna be a secret lift below it and this is the lift we want to take to get that Titanite slab which is going to be down bottom. Just wait until that comes up and head down. And there we have it. A uh, nice tight night slab. Right, so let's get on with the boss. Alright, let's do this. Let's go and kill the the twin princess. Right, so the Elder Prince boss battle. Uh, this is the first part of the battle. Um, you'll notice pretty soon that this part of the battle is actually really easy. It's really predictable. You just have to dodge away, get a, get a hit in. Just watch out when he teleports, just get ready to dodge. And yeah, in, in no time this guy will be done for. You do quite a lot of damage to this guy. As you can see, just one hit does all that. Oh, boom! I want to see what that does. Ooh, pretty nice. And another one? Oh, bye. We're not going to survive. Okay, ooh. When he teleports a bit further away, he's going to do that charge attack, which is really easy to dodge anyway. Alright, so once we've done that, the uh, younger brother's going to come along and heal or revive the elder brother and join the battle too. So, um, the general idea is to get rid of the young, the younger brother first because if we do the elder brother first then the um, younger brother is just going to keep reviving him. And it would be good if you let me heal just once, thank you very much. But in general, uh, you will probably end up killing the elder brother first and that way he's going to get revived. But, um, either way, uh, you will have time to hit the younger brother while he's um, reviving the older brother. I think I said that right. You have time to hit the younger brother while he's reviving the older brother. If you do happen to kill the older brother first, that is. Which is most likely because uh, it's pretty impossible to hit the uh, younger brother every time. Come on, dude. Let me get close to you. Thank you very much. I'm going to try and get behind him to a certain degree just to hit the younger brother. If we can get close, because they keep teleporting away, they're actually doing a piece of shit. Okay. So as you can see, the elder brother's about full, but I haven't really hit the uh, uh, younger brother, so we want to do that now. Now that he's reviving the um, elder brother. Oh, god damn it. Obviously, if we do happen to kill the um, younger brother first, the battle just ends straight away. I don't know what my problem is. I seem to dodge early so much in this battle. Probably not the best time to heal. Whoo, that's lucky. One Esther's left. Oh my god, I am doing horrible. Like, when I did it... Oh, fuck. When I did it on the Corrupted File with my normal character, I did it, like, second... Like, even first go, I'm not sure. Alright, anyway, this should be over. So it took... It took... I don't know, it just seemed pretty hard that time. I only just made it. Zero Esther. But yeah, we did it. Thank god. Anyway, we're gonna have so many souls to spend now, and... We're gonna get a final Lord of Cinder. Technically now we could go ahead and complete the game, but uh, we're not going to do that. Next episode is going to be Dra Arch Dragon's Peak, which is an optional area. We're going to be showing you how to get to that next episode anyway. 
but before ending this episode, there's actually uh, two side quests I want to put an end to. Uh, so we're going to go back to Firelink. Alright, so first of all, Sirius is, is now done, technically. All we have to do now is, uh, once we beat the Twin Princes, we're going to head out to the tutorial area near Firelink Shrine. And we're going to head to her granddad's grave to see what we find. Come on. Okay, thank you. So if you don't remember, her granddad's grave is down here with this guy. And yeah, we're going to find Sirius's body dead and we're going to get her talisman. And uh, also the other uh, NPC quest I want to end is Orbex. So let's go ahead and talk to Orbex and give in the crystal scroll, which is the final scroll. And learn everything we can from it. So anyway, um, now that Sirius is dead and we've done her side quest to the end. Technically, um... Okay, let's do this. Technically now we can go ahead and do Leonhard's quest and talk to Rosario and all that because, you know, there's no Sirius left to to get pissed off at it. So we can do Leonhard's quest too. But we're going to be doing that at the start of next episode just to not make this video too long. But anyway, once we've, um, once we've talked to Orbeck and learnt every spell we can, we're going to go ahead and head back into the Grand Archives from the first bonfire. Okay, so the reason we come back here is to pick up Orbeck's ashes. And his ashes will only spawn if we have learnt every single spell we can from him. So the quickest way to get to the area with his ashes is come over here to the right and take the elevator that we activated. And, and yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much all we've got left to do this episode. So we have now completed Orbex, we've completed Sirius, we've completed Grey Rats, we've completed Sieg Wards, we've completed um, Patches, we've completed Arenas, um, the Pyromancy you can't really complete, just buy stuff. The uh, Dark Magic NPC we can't really complete either. And yeah, really the only uh, NPC quest line we haven't completed yet is Urius, which is technically just completing the game. And uh, Hawkwoods, which we're going to be doing next episode. And that's it, really. We have literally done everything possible in the game. And this is the end of Orbeck's quest. So just in that chair, Orbeck with his ashes. Uh, with these ashes, we can either go and give them into Uria to get the Morian Blade. Or you could just give them back to the merchant and she will sell you a few things. So yeah, guys. Um... I'm sorry if I really do sound stressed out this episode, but it has been stressful, like losing a whole video, having to get here again, sit there for ages trying to get the video file back. I actually started a different character to try and get here again, but um, I figured out that I had this character luckily. So yeah guys, uh, next episode will be back with the normal character, but it doesn't really matter. I've made it look exactly the same, except uh, Grey Rat that I explained pretty well where his ashes are. So yeah guys, if this was helpful, please go to like and subscribe if you're not already. Remember you can follow me on Twitter. You can support the channel more directly on Patreon, which is much appreciated. You can check out my Teespring campaign for my t-shirts. And we'll see you next episode, guys. Where to go from here is clear, I'm on my own, yet I still feel off the chain like stolen bicycles. It was drilled in my head that I'm a selfish fuck, that I get on my own nerves when I talk too much. Told that I live my life disconnected and empty, with a smile that's insane as if I'm overly friendly. So do what you will, I'm still here and I won't leave, but look at how mean you can be that it's so sweet. Run for the hills, I'm as ill as your whole team. Drove off a cliff and I landed on both feet. Both feet. Will I I admit that I'm done with the old me The dirtier it gets, the more I'm feeling I'm so clean That I don't need Molly to be rolling with these changes I'm at the library in a quiet meditation Damn, people look pissed off and too abrasive With lots of personality and no conversation An epic name is who inspired me to think And I've hit the home run, I'm just rounding all the bases I'm skydiving into your world Designed to fly flying up from the earth Will not be defeated Hell is for freezing Scream till it's peaceful It's walking on beaches Laughing how dark it can get in this place As if you're eating the soul of a demon for strength that was